Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Lab 207 Webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series on Earth systems. Today's topic is going to be weathering and erosion. So like always, let me get you some objectives. We'll get going. By the end of this video, know the following things. Be able to explain the rock cycle. Second, describe each of the major rock types. And finally, discuss weathering and erosion. So let's go ahead and jump on in. First thing I want to talk about is the rock cycle period. We're just going to tag it as slow and steady. Um, of all of these cycles, water cycle, carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, all of the Earth cycles, the rock cycle is the slowest. But every rock you have ever seen, touched, or walked on has in some way or at some point in its life been through this cycle. So without saying too much more on that, let me just go ahead and show you a diagram and we'll walk you through the rock cycle. So the rock cycle, like any other cycle, is the continual cycling of minerals through these three steps. And we're going to go ahead and start out right here in the middle with a metamorphic rock. Now, the origin of all rocks is magma right here. So you have got the mantle. Mantle, like we said the other day, is molten minerals. That mantle gets pushed up into the crust of the earth and this could be at a volcano it could be under the sea at a divergent boundary um, it could be at a random opening in the earth's crust but either way this magma when it cools down and crystallizes will form igneous rock i know i just said we're going to start with met metamorphic but we're going to start with igneous so the magma cools down and it forms igneous rock that igneous rock gets uplifted to the surface now this uplift could occur during an earthquake. It could just be uncovered over time as the land away above it wears away. Um, it could be pushed up as two plates run into each other. Either way, somehow the igneous rock gets uplifted to the surface. Once it's on the surface, the elements work on it and weathering and erosion occurs. Weathering is where a rock is broken down. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Erosion is where those sediments are taken away. So weathering and erosion occurs, those sediments get transported downslope, usually via wind, glacier, or water, and then they start to layer on top of each other. So you've got like one year of sediment, and then two years of sediment, and three years of sediment, and four years of sediment, etc. They all compress and they form sedimentary rock. And then from there, a couple things can happen. The sedimentary rock could get pushed back up to the surface, in which case it will go through weathering and erosion all over again. It could get subducted down under the earth, in which case it would be melted into magma and go through this process again. Or if it is subjected to intense heat and pressure, it will change into a third type of rock called a metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that have undergone intense heat or pressure. Now the igneous rocks can be heated and pressed into a metamorphic rock and a sedimentary rock can be heated and pressed into a metamorphic rock, and metamorphic rocks can be heated and pressed into other types of metamorphic rocks. So those metamorphic rocks could get pushed up to the surface, in which case they'd go through the weathering and erosion cycle again, or they could get pushed down under the surface and melted back into magma. So know the basics of this diagram right here and how it describes the cycling of minerals through our earth. Now I'm gonna go through each type of rock real quick, just a couple points on each. First, you got igneous rock. Now, remember, igneous rock is the rock that comes directly from cooled magma. Um, there are two types of igneous rocks. There are basaltic and there are granitic. Basaltic rocks are rocks that make up the oceans, uh, the, <laughs> the crust of the earth under the ocean. So this would be like the ocean floor. Um, and a granitic rock is the type of rock that makes up the continental crust. That would be the stuff that we walk on. Um, you can talk about igneous rock as being formed intrusively or extrusively. If it is an intrusive rock, that means that the magma cooled while it was beneath the surface of the earth. If it is an extrusive rock, that means that the magma cooled on the surface of the earth. So say a lava flow like you see there in the picture, that would be extrusive because that lava will cool on the outside of the earth. Now, with igneous rocks, if they cool very rapidly, such as being extrusive cooling on the surface of the earth, the crystals in them form very quickly. They don't have time to grow. So it forms a very fine grained smooth rock like obsidian, which looks like glass. Um, if magma cools underneath the earth, if it cools slowly, so like an intrusive rock, it'll have larger, coarser grain um, and will just generally look rougher to the touch. So that's an igneous rock. Then you got your sedimentary rock. Now this picture on the right is a perfect picture of sedimentary rock because if you remember from our rock cycle diagram, sedimentary rock forms when sediments layer on top of each other and then get pressed together. So if you look at this sandstone right here, you can see all of the layers of sediment that over time got pressed together 
forming a sedimentary rock. Two things you should know about sedimentary rock. Um, it is highly porous, so water and other liquids can move through it. It is usually, it's the only rock that you will find fossils in because as those sediments get laid down, let's say dinosaur dies, he falls in the river, mud washes over him, that's going to turn into sedimentary rock, and that's where your fossils are going to be preserved. Because of the heat and the pressure, you never find fossils in metamorphic or igneous rock. So fossils are only found in sedimentary rock. Also, because sedimentary rock is highly porous, you generally find oil associated with it. Or if you're going to find oil, it will be associated with a sedimentary rock. And then finally, you get your metamorphic rocks. And that kind of grainy picture on the right, you can see it's all zigzaggy. You can see kind of right here how it zigs and zags. Um, this kind of demonstrates how metamorphic rocks are formed. Remember we said if you take a rock and, uh, and subject it to intense heat and pressure, it will become metamorphic rock. So at one point in time, this could have been a sedimentary rock where the layers were nice and flat, but you subject it to heat and pressure, and it bends and it waves. The chemical composition changes. Um, metamorphic rocks are great for building with because of the heat and the pressure they've been subjected to. They're extremely strong. And two examples of metamorphic rock are slate and marble. I'm going to wrap up with weathering and erosion. And this is that part of the rock cycle where rocks actually make it to the surface of the earth and then get broken down. <clears throat> weathering is the physical breakdown of the rock. Erosion is where the resulting sediment is carried away. So rocks are weathered into sediment and then erosion carries away that sediment. And within weathering. There is physical weathering and there is chemical weathering. Physical weathering is a physical breakdown through temperature, water, or plant action. Um, temperature, as plant, or not as plants, as rocks cool down and heat up, they contract and expand. And within those rocks, different minerals contract and expand at different rates. So you can say that as your rock is going through the winter, say, and it heats up and cools down day and night, those minerals are going to be expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting. And as that happens, it causes the rock to crack and fracture and break. Also, water, as it gets down into the cracks of rocks and freezes, it expands, which is called frost wedging, and that can literally split a boulder in half. And also plants, as the roots get down into cracks, those roots expanding can also uh, crack a rock. So that would be physical weathering. There's no chemical change. It's just physical processes working on the rock. Contrast that with chemical weathering. There's a chemical change. Um, the minerals in the rock are dissolved. They're released to the soil. Some examples of this or an example of human impacting the rock cycle. Um, as humans release sulfur and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, that sulfur mixes with the uh, rain in the atmosphere to cause sulfuric acid. Uh, carbon dioxide that is released mixes with precipitation to form carbonic acid. When those weak acids fall on um, rocks, specifically limestone, they can dissolve it away. So this is a real big problem with building materials like that statue you see there on the right. Acid precipitation will dissolve away limestone and other uh, softer building materials. And like I said, as chemical weathering occurs, there is not a physical breakdown. You're not prying or pulling things apart. This is just actually dissolving the minerals and returning them back to the soil. Now I kind of talked, well, no I didn't, sorry, I haven't talked about erosion yet. Um, erosion is the transport of sediment by wind, water, or glaciers. So once those rocks are broken down, whether it is through physical weathering giving you like coarse sediments, or chemical weathering dissolving things away, erosion is going to be carrying those pieces away. And wind is going to be where the wind blows through and picks it up and carries it to one place or the other. Water obviously is going to be like a flowing stream or rain carrying it away and then a glacier would be those hunks of ice that slide down a mountain and push everything in front of them. So erosion is carrying it away and once it's finally set down somewhere that is called deposition. Now deposition can be a good thing or a bad thing. If you're a farmer deposition is really good at the end of a river because all that sediment that carries down the river is really thick and rich with organic material. So where it is deposited the farmland is really great. Um, However, if those river sediments have been polluted, then you don't want those sediments to be deposited anywhere near you. And unfortunately, human activities enhance erosion quite a lot. Um, any activity that takes vegetation off the soil greatly uh, impacts or increases erosion because there's nothing left to hold that soil in place. So let's say you deforest an area and it rains really hard. There are no trees to stop the fall of that rain, no roots to hold the soil in place. So that rain hits the ground and it carries all the uh, sediments away. It carries your topsoil away. 
Um, a lot of farming practices take all the vegetation off the top of the soil before they replant it so wind can come through and blow it away. Construction projects, I'm sure you've driven past a construction project and seen the dust being kicked up, that would be erosion. So uh, just kind of in your head, put together erosion and human activity. They're often strongly associated and a lot of human activities greatly uh, increase erosion. So that's it. Rock cycle, weathering, erosion types of rocks. Go back and review if you need to. But for now, thanks for joining us on the Lab 2 So webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.